Yeah, that's Mark Evans here, um, a bass player and a guitar player, and started off playing bass with ACDC and lots of other bands um, along the way. Uh, when I started with ACDC, I'd, I'd been playing bass in bands for, for uh, only about 12 months. But um, initially when I saw about the gig with the ACDC, they, I, I was told they were looking for a guitar player because Malcolm was playing bass at the time, who they were working as a four-piece. But you know, once I went and met them, it became apparent that um, you know, a bass player was needed. So well, you know, I had a couple of Fender basses and an amp, so that's how it started. And uh, when you play, um, just think about playing bass with, with Malcolm Young and Phil Rudd. You know, if you, if you can't play bass with those guys, get a new career path, you know. You, you really need some help. <laughs> but you, know, you, you get an armchair ride playing with those guys. They, 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 they were great to work with, really good. Very loud. I, I um, met the guys on a Saturday afternoon uh, through a mutual friend who was um, roading for them, a guy called Steve McGrath, who incidentally I used to play football with. And um, so I got their address and went around and, and, and met them. They gave me a copy of the High Voltage album, which is it only just come out at that stage. This is March 1975. And uh, I went and learned the record and went back the next night. Now there's a couple of things on that record which, which now are Oh, there's a ballad on it called Love Song, which is most un ACDC like. And I listened to the record and I thought, well, it's a couple of good things. I love Baby Please Don't Go, you know, because I love blues, still do. And um, so I oh, yeah, I'll go have a go with this. And I wasn't too sure about from listening to the record. But we kicked in, at the, the first song they wanted to do was um, Soul Stripper, which is, is, which is that. Um, That sort of stuff. And Malcolm said to me, oh, okay, this song is the reason why you're here. He said, the last guy we had playing in the band fucked it up every time. You know, lovely, lovely to see you too, Malcolm. You know? <laughs> so, so they'll get it right. And it just from, from like the first couple of... And the guitars come in and I just went, fuck, this is it. It's like the biggest light bulb in the world going off in your head. He said, now I get it. There was a lot of power there. Bond wasn't there. I didn't meet Bond at the first gig, about five minutes before the first gig. What a character that guy was. His, um, his own admission, he was a great bunch of guys. You know? He was brilliant. You know? I always um, remember one story with Bond. He um, sticks in my mind. It's actually the, the prelude to the book. Is that we, were in, um, we were in Paris and we were touring with Black Sabbath. And... Uh, we got to Paris a couple of days early, and, uh, and Bond and myself had met, met up with a couple of uh, lovely Parisian ladies, and um, we spent a few days with them. And, and Bond and myself were, were out all night, and drinking and hanging out with these girls, and and it was like we we're on a bender for about you know, two or three days. So it got to the, we kept on going, and then Bond and myself were shared this 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 suite in the hotel was on the, you know, one of the boulevards there and had these tiny little balconies, tiny balconies, just enough to get two people on them and two, like by myself, two small people. I was the tallest guy in the band. I'm, I'm, I'm five foot six, right? But you look at the old photos, it's like I could have, I could have been, you know, I could have played in the ruck for the Eagles, you know, I, I look like I'm massive. But uh, so we're there and, and we were toasted. So I was having a bit of a gloat to Bond, you know. So there we were on the balcony with another bowl of red. And we're looking, overlooking Paris and the sun's coming up. It just looks amazing, right? And it could have been 100 years ago because there's no high rise. So we're looking over at all of Paris, Eiffel Tower, it's just gorgeous. And I'd say to Bond, oh, what about this, mate? This is fantastic, isn't it? And Bond's like, do you want one of these? Oh, my fuck, what's the matter with him? You okay, Bon? And he's just going. There's a tower just like that in Paris. So, so at that point, it went. Oh, we better go to bed. <laughs> so, if, you, if you're doing that, you're, you're looking at the Eiffel Tower, it should click that you're actually in Paris. But at that point, I thought, oh, we might have a little bit, a little bit of a snooze. I think at some stage today, through necessity, you know, I've, I've got got some bases, of course, like like, like this one. So it's, uh, it's a Gibson Ripper. Uh, cherry sunburst one, and um, some of you may have seen it before on the back of a truck somewhere. It actually fell off the back of the truck at one stage, I think. 
let me see it. Gibson Ripper was on uh, all the TNT album, Dirty Deeds album. Joe, when I was recording Joe with ACDC, that was a, that was a, a, an old Rickenbacker 4001 bass. And all the stuff after that has been Fender Precision basses. I enjoy the, the playing live mostly, um, only because of the camaraderie there. It, it's good fun, and I, I like I like the feeling of of working um, in a in a, a group situation. That's always been good. You know, I've, you know, I've always been a, a, you know I use a, a sports analogy here. I've always been a, a team player, and I enjoy being part of a team and, and being and being in a successful team. You know, and. Uh, that that's that's playing live is is it and, and recording is good too but that, that that's a, a different completely different beast. Do it properly. Be passionate about it. You know, if you're not passionate about it, well, probably it's not what, something you should be doing. It, it's it's you know, playing music and and, and uh, writing. Um, it's it's something by necessity. I don't think you should really have to work at it. The, the best things come naturally. And uh, you know that that's you know the way it should be. Otherwise, it sounds forced. So just be natural about it and follow. You know, try not to listen to too many people. You know, just do your own thing, and and, and stick to your guns. Don't be chasing it and changing things all the time for necessary just for change. Just you know, believe in what you do, and keep at it.